the top of the mountain has arrived. Who will reach the summit? It is the Class A 2024 Flyers Cup Championship game. It is the Hershey Trojans and the Unionville Longhorns. Joined by Eric Wolf, Jordan Coons alongside. Thanks for joining us here on this presentation of the 2024 Flyers Cup. Sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. You've seen both of these teams before. You saw Hershey in last year's championship game. Not a lot of change to their lineup, but you've also seen Unionville this year in uh, your first game in the, the Flyers Cup this season. Let's go through each team. First, let's start with Hershey. They're here, and they certainly have played well to get here. Yeah, uh, Hershey, like you said, uh, at the end of last year, I, I, I said to Eric Ty, the Flyers Cup uh, president, <laughs> would not be surprised to see that team right back here uh, next year just because of the people that they weren't losing. They weren't turning over a lot of their roster. Uh, and I see a lot of familiar names out there tonight that uh, I was game planning for this time last year. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a very experienced team. Um, they were very successful in the Central Penn League. Uh, and with another Bears Cup in their trophy case, uh, came here as, as had to be one of the favorites, and they're they're rightfully in this game. Yeah, to me, it's kind of their shot here because of all those players that have returned. You're not going to hold on to them forever, and obviously, there's a standard to keep turning it over and whatever have you. This feels like their shot here. Would you agree? I think, yeah. I mean, in terms of what their roster says. Um, I'm sure they're happy not to see Westchester East uh, <laughs> across from them. Um, you know, we didn't hold up our end of the bargain, but um, they better not sleep on their opponent tonight. Um, Unionville has really been opportunistic. Um, you know, you're not going to see a team that maybe had the regular season they had be in this position, but just get in. And that's what they did. They got in, and they've taken it from there. Yeah, 8-11 and 11 during the regular season. Um, negative goal differential. But when it came to this, boy, have they played well. They have gotten, you know, not only just incredible goaltending from Zach Thomasevich, but also just clutch scoring and uh, really depth scoring across the board. Doesn't seem like not one guy. Maybe Cole Blackburn is playing really well, but it's not just him that's carrying the load. What about them makes them tough to put away? I think, Billy, the difference is they're getting some scoring from guys that maybe didn't do it during the season, like a Michael Topp. Yeah. Been really hot in the Flyers' Cup. I watched him play against Plymouth White Marsh, and he was awesome. Um, and guys like Riley Andrews, you know, a young guy who's, you know, been really good to give them a second group that they can rely on and get some offensive production from. Uh, and, and that's what you need. Uh, you know, I've always said that if you can be two, three lines deep at high school, you can be successful. Um, and they're starting to see, you know, fruits of that. Is they're getting a balanced scoring. They're getting guys contributing. They're, like you said, their goaltender has been playing well. And if you're not getting the goaltending, you're not here. You've coached a championship game or two and a championship team or two. What does it take? in a game like this to come away victorious? I mean, I'm sure I'm not shocking anyone would say the team that makes the least mistakes um, and who is typically best in their own end. Um, if, if you can not turn pucks over at your, D, at your D blue line and you're playing on the other side of your D blue line, and it's enormous. Uh, that's, it, it takes the pressure off your goaltender. It, it frustrates your opponent. So if you're really sound in that area and you're not spending a lot of time in your D zone, I think that's enormous, And but it always comes back to the guy in the pipes. One guy who's definitely gotten it done this year is our player shout out. That's Kyle Kloss. We're congratulating on an outstanding senior year and an entire Hershey High School career. You've worked for and have earned all you've achieved. Continue to go for it. That's Kyle Kloss who uh, scored a couple of goals in the last game. Uh, 41 goals in 51 games at the high school level. Knows how to get it done, especially this time of year. He's getting it done. Blake Umberger's starting to get hot. Ryan Dewan is starting to get hot. They are a team that, when I look at it, they, they play a really complete game. They play a nice structured game under Jared Hill. 
took care of business against them last year, but they were not an easy out, I don't think, by any stretch of the imagination. What makes them a tough out? Well, it's, I think the, the one thing that stands out as me is they're very unselfish. You'll see sometimes at high school maybe a guy will carry the puck a little too long because maybe he's a little more skilled. Um, these guys, I, I always said, they all look like the same player when they come out. They just keep rolling out the same guy. Um, now, maybe that's because there's so many Irwins on the team. I don't yeah, know. But, like uh, seven or eight. Their, yeah, I can't keep track of the Irwins. But, um, no, they just, every guy, and that's, you know, a tribute to their style of play. They the guys buy into what they want to do. And when you can just keep doing that line after line after line, it makes you a very tough team to beat. We've got a good one on hand. It's the Class A championship game between Unionville and Hershey. Great representation from both sides, including those coming from Hershey that took the multi-hour long trek from out west to come here in Unionville right around the corner. They've got great representation here as well. So opening face-off between these two championship finalists is right around the corner here on coverage of the 2024 Flyers Cup sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. This broadcast is presented by the Flyers Cup and SFBN who own all broadcast rights. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, including social media, is strictly prohibited. Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases.
Championship Tuesday at the 2024 Flyers Cup. It's the single A Flyers Cup Championship between Unionville and Hershey, along with Eric Wolf, Jordan Coons alongside. Thanks for climbing aboard with us on this journey. Two teams vying for a chance at a Flyers Cup Championship, one for the first time in, I don't know, 30 years at this point, and the other one for the first time ever. Let's see what each of these teams has tonight with was expected to be quite a raucous crowd. Many of them on the Unionville side, I'm sure that's their student section, standing and ready to pounce. And playing with house money, in my mind, I remember saying this uh, in their game, in the win against Marple Newtown, they they have nothing to lose. They are here, and they've earned it, and here they are. 100%. I don't think anybody had Unionville in the final in their Flyers Cup pool. Uh, but cheers to them. They did the job. They're here. And like I said, I think this is, yeah, why not let it all roll, right? What do you got to lose? You, if you thought at the beginning of the season you were going to be here, good on you. But now you are. See what they do with it. Unionville in the navy blue with gold lettering and numbering and a white trim for Hershey. They're in the white uniforms, blue lettering and numbering, and an orange trim. It's Anthony Culp right off the bat, a centering pass. That's blocked away by Matt Dalkovich in a two-on-two. The other way up the right wing for Hershey. Snaps a shot. That missed the net over top of Zach Thomas-Savage in the net for the Longhorns. Seven to nine at 3.99 goals against average and an 8.55 save percentage in season. During the tournament, though, a 2.89 goals against average and an 8.92 save percentage. Alex Placeris gets the nod for Hershey. 10 and one, a 2.45 goals against average and a 9.06 save percentage in season. He has some gaudy numbers, a .5 goals against average and a 9.78 save percentage in the Flyers Cup tournament to this point. Here's Ryan Dewan in on the forecheck for Hershey. Pass back to the line for Rittner. Now to the left side, David Mace with a one-touch pass that comes back to the line. Handled by Aaron Heisey at the right point. He'll dump it in deeper. Unionville there with Trip Young. Turns it over. It's put out in front. Flex away from everyone back into the Hershey zone. Not going to be icing here as it was off a Hershey stick. David Mace to Ryan Dewan. Spinning in front of the Hershey bench, trying to pass that is intercepted by Young in front of the red line. Will sky it deep for Unionville. How much of a feeling out period are you expecting here in the first couple minutes? Uh, I thought there wasn't going to be much feeling out. I thought Unionville was going to just go. I thought they were going to come out here and use their that speed they have with their first line um, and just go. And they, they, they kind of did that. There was one maybe good look when the D stepped up for Hershey there, but uh, they come right back with them real quick here. Trojans have control, a clearing attempt off the glass. Picked up here by Bryce Irwin up the left wing for the Trojans. Drops it off. Cox with a backhander. Ends up on Irwin's stick. He lifts it over top of the net. Puck to the line. And Tucker Velosky just barely kept the zone for Hershey. Unionville in control. And there is Cole Blackburn. 20 points during the regular season, but nine of them during the Flyers' Cup with an outlet here. Up the right side, it was Jack Anderson. It was denied entry by Dolkovich, and it's chipped out to center by the Trojan. Scoreless in the first two minutes, 20 seconds here of the championship game of the single-A Flyers' Cup bracket. Dolkovich getting those crossovers moving through center. In over the Unionville line, a backhand pass. That's defended away nicely by Carano de Toro. Up the near side glass and past Tyler Lucas waiting at the line for Hershey. It's a successful clear for Unionville. Dumped in deep. Velosky there for Hershey. Watch there by Sam Burke who forced a steal. Centers the puck out in front. No luck on any reception there. Kyle Kloss, the senior captain, leads it up ahead for Tyler Treadway. Looking to create a foot race up the left side for Hershey. A barrel into the boards opposite Young. Battle on for the puck in the near corner. Under 14 minutes to play. First period, no score. Young with the puck for the Longhorns, and he'll clear the zone. Loss off a steal. Will send in, and Hershey will change. Here's Burke. Turns it over, though, and it's not the guy you want to turn it over to. Blake Umberger will send it from whence it came. Blackburn arrives for Unionville to send it to the weak side. Pinching it, Umberger, can he get to this? Yes, he can out of the near side corner for Hershey. 
Wraps the net, looks out in front, hooks it to the slot just off target for Ryan Dewan, and the puck is cleared by Blackburn out to center for Unionville. Quick back in come the Trojans. Umberger to David Mache. His drop pass off a stick. Collected and sent deep by Irwin. Picks up Dewan, side of the net, backhander. And the first save of the night belongs to Zach Thomasevich. Out it comes Irwin, now Mache, and now Umberger. Backhand pass to the slot is cut off. And Anderson will lift this puck to center. What do you see? Well, it looked Unionville got stuck in their end a little bit there with uh, their third group out and, and Umberger's group out. I'm not sure that's a, a real good matchup for them going forward. Uh, they were able to get the change back to um, to Anderson's line, but I, that's one of those matchups we want to look at to see if uh, Hershey can take advantage of it. Well, Saris makes his first save of the night as now Unionville will start from their own zone. Hershey changes up. Here's Colt. He's the captain of this outfit, gets the shot away. A stick save by Placeris. Hershey will pick up the rebound, and out they come. Tenuously, Bryce Irwin able to get that out. Turned right back in by Culp as now Unionville will change here on the fly. Five minutes in to the first period. No score in this championship game. Brought out by Owen Hule. He's checked right at center, and the Trojans have to start from their own end of the ice. The pass. That hits a skate out of the reach of Burt. Hershey will take it back with Heisey. Pass up the middle. Bryce Irwin enters right down Broadway. Stick handles to his backhand. He'll peel off. Get it back to the blue line. Here's a chance here developing. Shot attempt. Save made. Thomas Savage. Rebound into the corner. That shot off the stick of Rittner. Puck to the line to Heisey. Off the wall with it. Shoots the puck from the point. That's blocked and cleared the distance. This will be icing against Unionville. Oh, well, that was a long time between whistles there. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> Finally, everyone take a breath. Looks like Hershey's starting to get a little bit comfortable with what Unionville's doing in their own end, their, their heads up. I don't know if Unionville's sitting back a little bit defensively to try and take away the middle of the ice, but um, giving them time and space could be a problem down the road. Dalkovich from the point, wrist shot block. Colt will bring it. Comes up ice, takes the shot, and Placeris will put the clamps down on that one, get a stoppage as we have our first little snarl here of the evening, but nothing too serious as we get a stoppage and a faceoff in the Hershey zone. 11-13 to go first period, and no score here in the Class A championship. Well, Unionville uh, seeing quite a few block shots here early. Is that their MO? They used to doing that. They they do get in the shooting lanes. Um, they're willing to to sacrifice to to not let pucks get to the net. Culp off an intercept for the Longhorns. A skipper that heads in on net, and Placeris will not take any chances and get the stoppage right there. The career of Alex Placeris. In his Hershey High School tenure, 17 and 2, a save percentage of 914. Not bad. A face-off win for the Longhorns. It was Andrews to Ta. That's just off target. Dalkovich takes over for Hershey, and out they will scoot. Umberger joined on his left by Dewan, gives him the pass up the left wing on the back can. Puts it out in front, and Thomas Savage sees that one get blocked right out in front of him. Is the net off, or do we have a call coming? No, the net's off. Staying outside must have been Hershey pushing it off. This is the matchup I think is going to tell us a lot here. Both teams' second groups. Um, if Hershey's, if Unionville's second group can deal with the likes of Umberger. Going to see a lot of ice time, especially for this deep pairing here. Trip Young, I get the feeling, is going to play maybe half this game, <laughs> maybe more. Here's a pass in front, just out of the reach of Mage, picked up by Dalkovich for Hershey. He'll bump it in below the goal line to Juan. Checked by Young, able to take over there, but he turns it over. Hershey has it again, Umberger to the back. Taken by Velosky, throws it wide off the end boards. Young able to rescue it. And the Longhorns will get the puck out to center. Hershey will spin it right back in, but off a Trojan stick. And offside is the call. About 10 minutes to go, first period. Nothing yet. Shots even, three apiece. Oh, 
Bryce Irwin a face-off win. Moved ahead by Carter Irwin and into the attacking zone. So there's three Irwins and three Thomas Savages, I believe, on either of these outfits tonight. Hope you brushed up on your first names. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a steal as Bryce Irwin has control of the puck. As Owen Hule's on his left and gives it to him. Hule steps around the defender and trying to chip it back to the line, but not enough mustard on that pass to keep the zone. There's Carter Irwin to move this ahead. Out of the reach of Brady Cox with just one goal in the Flyers' Cup, which was his first career Flyers' Cup goal and point. Throwing across, here's Tyler Lucas moving his way in. Toe drags and shoots, it's blocked, gets it back and hits the goal post. Thomas Savage down and a great chance there for Tyler Lucas but couldn't get it to go. This puck deflects up and out of play. And Thomas Savage and some heavy metal behind him come to his rescue. That there is going to be a problem if, uh, you know, Lucas, the, the term is silky mitts. He's got some really nice hands, and he just showed that right there, and uh, Eagles going to have to take a look at the chest and not look at the puck on him. 40 goals in 49 career games at the high school level. Here's Treadway with a pass in front. Kyle Kloss couldn't get all of that. One knee down, Clapper not to be. Chips off glass, pass Colt. Dang at center, moves this ahead for Unionville, but right into the teeth of the Hershey defense. Sent deep, Young around for Dang, a touch too strong. Heisey pinches in for Hershey, leads for Kloss behind the goal. He's checked, and the puck bumped off the boards but turned over to Tyler Lucas. Dangles his way now to the right circle, takes the shot, and Tomasevich fights it off the rebound into the corner to the line, kept in by Heisey. Drives it on Kloss to the middle of the ice. Lucas scores! Tyler Lucas opens the scoring for Hershey. 1-0 Trojans, 8-14 to go first period. Off the turnover and into the back of the net that quickly. It's Lucas' second goal of the Flyers' Cup. And 1-0 in favor of the Trojans. Yeah, there, there could have been a hook earlier in that se in sequence. Um, but Unionville wasn't able to get it out. And then you just got a nice little low to high slot. Bang. And then yeah, you saw Lucas's hands. <laughs> Denied on that first chance, not a second time. Comes up with the goal to give Hershey the one nothing lead here in the first period. Unionville trying to respond out in front, and Thomas Sevich lifts that backhander wide of the target. Kyle Kloss with the only assist. I imagine there will be another one. Assessed at some point, but that's not important right now. Where it does count, Tyler Lucas with the goal. Here's a turnover. Michael Todd throws it wide. Andrews puts it right back to him. Defending, though, the Trojans get this out the center. Here's Ryan Dewan, joined by David Mace and Blake Umberger. Shot attempt from an angle. Goes over top of the net. Donkovich keeps in for Hershey into the corner, then back to the slot. Umberger a step late. Unionville will take down by a goal. Clear at the distance. This will be icing against the Longhorns, 1-0 Hershey. On the goal by Tyler Lucas, his second of the Flyers' Cup this year. It looks like Hershey's starting to get a little comfortable possessing the puck, crossing the offensive blue line. So you might see Unionville might need to tighten that gap up with their defenseman a little bit. Couldn't agree more. Right now it's going to come down to, to point of entry and you know force dump in, right? You don't, when you have skilled players carrying it in more often than not without any resistance, you're just going to be asking for trouble all night. They're going to make plays. Unionville with the puck here in their own zone. There's Sam Burke with a pass. That's taken away by Bryce Irwin, but he is met quickly, and Colt carries back in. Nice move into the slot. Make it a second. And if he was in, he was clear. Young at the point keeps in after the hard work by Colt, That's but it's funny. turned over and a chance ahead for Hules, but he could not get that bouncing biscuit to settle. Longhorns on the outlet. Here is Colt on the pass from Burke. Colt the shot, save. Placeris and nothing else. Yeah, pretty much anything Munuel's had has been from the perimeter. 
nothing in the juicy areas between the dots. How do they get there? They may have to just maybe throw something in the goalie's feet and crash a little bit to, to just to get back Hershey off a little bit and have them worry about the front of their cage a little bit. The dreaded pass off pad. The POP. It works. It does work. <laughs> That was my patented move in NHL 14, playing online. Here's a shot that's blocked and maybe trouble the other way. Blackburn will push this ahead, creates a mini two-on-one. Blackburn shoots, but it's blocked. Carter Irwin gets a skate on that. It's trouble the other way as Hershey will bring it. Lucas, the goal scorer up the left wing, drives backhand, cuts out in front and gets leveled. Penalty call up coming against Unionville. First power play of the night, barring anything here, will belong to the Hershey Trojans who lead it 1-0. Yeah, I think it's a good play if he doesn't have his hands up. Uh, unfortunately, he got his hands up high, and they're going to they're gonna get you for that every time. Well, first man advantage of the night to the number three seed. Corrado de Toro assessed the penalty. But Lucas looked very dangerous on their power play against Garnet Valley, and he really works it nice on that right side. A face-off win for Unionville, and the clear is successful off the stick of Rittner. It's a foot race up for the puck. Andrews gets there and forces a shot attempt that Placeris has to make a save on. And that forces a bad pass by Hershey and an icing, which will send the face-off 200 feet down ice. You're watching the 2024 Flyers Cup Class A Championship. I'm Jordan Coons, Eric Wolf to my left. And as dangerous as Lucas was on the right side on that last power play group, Umberg is just as dangerous on the left side with this group. Yeah, it's kind of a death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> like you, there's an offside. It's a, okay, you don't want to deal with that group. Well, we're going to toss this one at you and have fun with that too. But right now, Hershey can't seem to get organized into the attacking zone, and Unionville's penalty kill has been stingy throughout this entire tournament. Yeah, the best chance on the first 30 seconds of this came from Unionville. If I'm remembering right, it was Unionville that had two shorthanded goals in the win over Marple Newtown, unless I'm completely misremembering. That's possible. Ooh. Here's a shot by Dewan. That's Tipped wide, Umberger to take. He'll drop this in below the goal line. Intercepted, but not out. Hayden Gaffney couldn't clear the zone. Sent across, Umberger scores! Blake Umberger from the left circle on a beautiful cross box look. 2-0 Hershey. 5.20 to go, opening period. That's a power play goal. Well, if they go to the box, they're going to have to take that lane away. They're going to have to focus on taking that pass away because you can't, your goaltender has no chance there. Third of the Flyers' Cup for Blake Umberger and a 2-0 Hershey score here in the first period. No real chance there going east-west. So after not getting much settled on that power play, it eventually works out for Blake Umberger. Pass up and out of play. Someone's getting a puck. Dalkovich and uh, Ryan Dewan pick up the assists on the tally by Umberger. Again, his third here of the Flyers' Cup this year. A two-sport star has played not only seven games at the NCDC level for the Jersey Hitmen, but also two games as a member of the Lincoln Stars. And here comes Matt Donkovich looking to make the move. He's denied entry by Unionville defenseman Anthony Dang. Brought back by Culp, and there's a little bit of body language that tells me a lot. Culp turns it over. Tyler Lucas settles his way in, and he'll peel off. Donkovich at the blue line, settles it down, picks up Lucas. He's got time, shoots the puck, and Thomas Savage with the blocker save into the corner. 
Flipped around the boards. Culp couldn't get a stick on that. Donkovich pirouettes at the left point and keeps the zone to Tyler Treadway. Once again, Culp converges on him. Race hunt for the pocket eventually pop its way out the center as Donkovich and Culp continue to joust for puck possession. Dolkovich will settle things down. Cross ice pass to Irwin. Bryce Irwin has a man breaking. He'll take the shot himself and force a face off in the Unionville zone as Thomas Savage covers up. Unionville is going to have to take away more time and space from Lucas. He looks very dangerous every time he crosses the red line, and that's not sustainable. <laughs> We'll get to my question in a second as Hershey continues to generate offense here. Bryce Irwin will lift this around the boards where it's cut off and sent to the line. Heisey, a good keep. Can Unionville get this out on second effort? Sure looks they will. And it's brought up by Andrews up the middle of the ice. He'll stick handle away from Rittner and guide this into the corner. Sent along to Ta on the backhand off the skate of the referee in the corner who lays fighting for possession with him as Unionville trying to grind out a cycle here. Comes to the line, kept in nicely by DeToro. Thrown to the net mount, here's Andrews. Rolls it again to the slot area, but it's covered up by goaltender Alex Placeres. So at this level, what will it take to really hammer the point of in-game adjustments of gap control home here for Unionville to get the message that you've got to cut them off at some point. Yeah, I think it's it's really, it's, it's if you find yourself having to take these guys with full speed every time they're hitting your blue line, you've got to realize that, okay, I've got to tighten up on him, so he's got to think more when he's coming at me, not just skate a beeline into my zone. Would you rather stick on puck or would you rather body? you got to have the stick there, but the, the problem is you're seeing the head down on the puck. Yeah. And if Lucas sees that, guys like him, they're going to feast on that. Puck in front, cleared by Unionville. That's going to go all the way down. It does not have enough gusto for Ison. He did see Dang step up and make a good play, head on the chest, and he didn't let the player through. They're going to need to do more of that. Dewan is about 10 feet offside. At five on five, 2.25 to go first period, and Hershey off and running with a 2 nothing score. Blake Umberger and Tyler Lucas with the goals to this point as Ta relinquishes possession to Velosky. The big man gets this out the center. And Thomas Savage on the case for Unionville with a shot attempt that's blocked by Lucas. And Kyle Kloss will create a foot race down the wing. Young takes over for Unionville and gets pressed into the boards, able to escape. And the four checking pressure, tough right now to get through. They are not sitting back. Stepping up Treadway now for the Trojans with Kloss in pursuit. Eventually helped out from in below the goal line, but again, Hershey's right there. They're up 2 nothing and creating a 2-1-2 four check here. As here is Curry with a chance, a pass across, and Dalkovich with a stick down forced that to get knocked away as Kloss may have lost an edge, brought the other way by Hershey's Dalkovich. The wing gets hammered as he's trying to get a shot away. It was blocked. Boy, I feel like we talked about that before the game, how Unionville is opportunistic. I, I talked about this with the game between uh, Council Rock South and Boyertown where it felt like Boyertown was just waiting, kind of like Switzerland at the World Junior Championships. They, they sit back, sit back, wait for you to make that mistake, and once you turn that puck over, it's trouble. That's how I feel like in these games where there might be that disparity, that you have to play it here. Yeah, and that's how they're going to, if they only get a couple opportunities and they create a turnover, man, they're really going to have to take advantage. They're going to have to cash in on those. That's the voice of multi-time Flyers Cup champion, Eric Wolf, and the zero-time Flyers Cup champion, Jordan Coons, with you here tonight. No one wants to know my championship history. I seem to bring it up a lot. My team's always got there and then lost. I think I'm 
I'd have to redo the numbers. I'm either 0 and 8 or 0 and 9 in championship <laughs> games as a broadcaster for teams that I covered back in my day. So that's right. I don't think. Be anybody, glad I'm not for either of these teams. I right won't now. tell anybody, and I don't think anybody heard you. Fair enough. <laughs> Here's a shot that Thomas Savage makes the save on 16 ticks left in period one. So they're going to get a, a quick respite here, and then right back at it for the second period. Your coach Totoro on the Unionville bench, what are you saying? Well, I think it was crucial, and I, I don't want to speak for the end of the period here, but to keep this at a two-goal deficit right now. And, you know, they didn't give, like, I don't want to speak before the end of this period, but if they keep this at two, I think that was a, a small victory because the ice was tilted there for a little bit. Um, and now it's time to build on it. I think the first thing is anytime we're getting across the blue line, we are getting pucks to the net, and we are skating through their D. We are going to make him make a save and cover because if he makes a save and rebound, you're there for something. And if you're going to use your speed, you can see Culp could skate by their D a little bit. Andrews skated by their D a little bit. You're going to have to make, make them take you down. Draw, find a way to get a penalty. Do something that causes them to get out of rhythm because they look like they're getting in a, in a rhythm. First period is done. We'll see what kind of in-game adjustments are on the way. But after one here at the 2024 Flyers Cup Single A Championship game, it's Hershey 2 and Unionville nothing. We're back after this. Do you know what a blue hen is? It's prideful. Spirited. Fiery. A blue hen never backs down from a challenge. And we're there to support them. Delaware Orthopedic Specialist, the official orthopedic partner of University of Delaware Athletics. Who can help you undo damage done by fire or water? Search no further than the experts at Accord Restoration, who have the experience and know-how to make your home feel whole again. Since 2004, we've helped people go from disaster to done. Accord Restoration, on the web at AccordRestoration.com or call 717-564-4000. The 2024 Flyers Cup coverage on the official YouTube channel is presented by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. Uh, Eric, how much of this do you have in your closet these days? I, I actually don't have as much anymore. No? <laughs> I didn't buy any the last couple of years, and that, kind of foolish on my part. Our, our club's done some nice things for us um, after the victory. So, um, But I do. I, I might have some, some nice ones that are considered classics now um <laughs> but uh i don't have any of this swag this is good stuff good looking stuff i've though. been pounding on the door of this one in the top left okay yeah it's sharp they're all sharp so head to the flyers cup official website or at the address at the bottom of your screen but at this point go to flyers-cup.org to order yours today off the bat hershey coming back in left to right here in the period of the long defensive change and a puck out of play to me, this is Unionville's chance. Catch Hershey, end of a long shift or a missed change here. That's tough to change in these periods where you got to get that puck deeper. If you turn it over, it's trouble. Yeah, if, if Hershey gets any kind of sustained pressure down here and are able to make line changes while they do it and keep one of Unionville's groups on, that could spell trouble. Blackburn, oh, shot off the wing. Placeris, the stick save into the corner. Hershey will take, leading 2-0 here in this championship game, looking for their first Flyers Cup championship in program history. And I think that shot by Unionville is something they need to do more of. Get it there, and you know they didn't have somebody crashing, but get someone driving that net hard. Dewan, given all kinds of time, shoots a save. Thomas Savage into the corner. Treadway now to Rittner high slot. Attempt there and a save. Thomas Savage again. Hershey continuing to buzzsaw here on the forecheck. Umberger to the back, but the pass split the two defenders and forces the Trojans back out to center ice. Yeah, it's about winning that race to the puck there after that shot to create that puck into the corner, a 50-50. Got to get there at some point. Shot for the line. Thomas Savage reels it in and covered. Tyler Lucas and Blake Umberger, the goals to this point for the number three seeded Trojans. Probably to the surprise of no one. Yep. <laughs> 
You saw that you talked about the long change. Unionville kind of got caught a little bit there. They got one of their wingers off, but the rest of their group uh, kind of got had to wait till the stoppage. Another save from Thomas Evich. He'll get the stoppage and another face off in the Unionville zone. Face off win for Hershey. It's Lucas again. That's a hard shot that was blocked en route to the cooker. Hershey fans and players wanted a tripping call there. Nothing forthcoming. We play on as Heisey will go D to D. Rittner dusts it off and he'll stick handle to the middle. Backhand looked to Quas from the left circle. Shot it wide. Rebound at the side of the net. Treadway couldn't get it through. Bumped up the boards and the clear off some snow out to center. with the puck now for Unionville, and the Longhorns look to get something moving in the attacking zone. Andrews to do battle in the near side wall, crashing in. Thomas Savage forcing a steal and throwing it wide of the target. Puck up the boards now, and it's Bryce Irwin who will get this out. Young sends it from whence it came after getting hit by Treadway into the Hershey bench. DeToro. Trying to create a foot race over Rittner's head. Culp skates onto it, throws it on goal, and Placeris the save. Hershey wanted an offside call not to be. Who lays the other way for Hershey? Shoots the puck, it's blocked, and sent out by DeToro. And Hershey quickly back into the attacking zone with Hulays, but he's offside by a good margin. I think we just saw right there, Hershey was in a change um, and came over the offensive blue line one on four and no one from Unionville stepped up the pressure. Um, I think when you have that odd situation, that's when you create that turnover there and go. And I think they're gonna have to do more of that as they see that come across their blue line during the game. Bouncing Biscuit into the attacking zone. And Culp will help the clear for Unionville. Long pass ahead, that's off a stick. And here's Aaron Kunkfer now on the left wing side for Hershey, a wrist shot block, gets it right back. Now to the point, off target for Carter Irwin, potential trouble the other way as Blackburn now fishes this puck off the wall, centers the puck out in front, and Culp couldn't get that one to settle down, otherwise he was all alone in front. Dang steps up and keeps the puck in below the goal line. Irwin arrives, but turns the puck over to Blackburn. Steps off the wall and shoots the puck. That's off for Hershey, stick up and out of play. Keep the face off in the Unionville attacking zone. This is a great good signs there from the Longhorns right there. Yeah, that was good, and uh, that was a great back check by Confer. I mean, that could be a goal if he's not there lifting a stick from behind. Probably their best setup of the night right there for sure. That was point blank. That's, they're going to need more of that, but that was the, definitely their best look. 2-0 Hershey over Unionville here in the Class A Championship. Shot by DeToro, takes David Mesh's stick from circle to circle. Puck into the corner, and the Longhorns have it at the side of the net. Dalkovich defending opposite Thomas Evett. Dalkovich, a backhand attempt, can't clear the zone past Ta, fighting for possession of the near side wall, can't get out cleanly, and Hershey will move it. Brought by Umberger, checked nicely by Gaffney. Driven to Mesh now for Hershey into the attacking zone. Takes a hit to make the play out to the line. Kept in by Dalkovich. Ta takes over for the Longhorns, and he created two on one with speed here. Try to feather it on left wing side for Thomas Savage not to be. Hershey quickly the other way with Tyler Treadway with a pass circle to circle, not to be that time either for the Trojans. And here's DeToro, stick lift by Treadway, making entry difficult. A little bit of possession ping pong here over the last little bit with 12.23 to go second period. Blackburn settles down a puck, and he's off to the races past Velosky. Centers it out in front, and Placeris the save on Culp. Penalty call up coming against Hershey. Anthony Culp 
was looking for his second of the tournament and stonewalled by Alex Placeris right in front, but a penalty spotted. Kyle Kloss will take the seat for interference. And now Unionville with a chance on the man advantage first time tonight. Yeah, I think Unionville starting to see maybe if they hit, hit the Hershey D with a little more speed and maybe take them wide a little bit more. They, they seem to have some success doing that the last two, two good opportunities they had. That's the guy you want taking the shot there, but not to be this time. Let's see if the power play can get it done. Here's Anderson with a shot. Pad stopped by Placeris. Rebound back in behind the goal. Anderson wins the battle. Force the near side cult. A touch too strong for Blackburn. Can Unionville get possession? Puck sitting at the side of the net. And Colt bats it off the netting. Out to the line, Gaffney. Back it'll go. They play some catch. Gaffney straight away. Hands it off. Colt dust, shoot, see. Placeris, he has it. 129 left in the penalty. So their senior captain, Kyle Kloss, with 11.35 left in the second period. I'm not going to call this must score territory for Unionville here, but I would call it sure would be nice territory to get one here. I think it would really give them a shot in the arm that they probably need right now. Um, I think they've settled it down a little bit uh, since, you know, since the second goal. The Toro trying to force one. That's blocked and cleared. What are you looking for there that gets taken away on a, a penalty kill at the point there? Well, I think the thing is I, I never want to see a point man try and sh shoot through someone that's coming right at him right there because I don't think you need to. Because if, if he's challenging you in a one-on-one -on -one up there, that means you have an advantage down low just because of the, you know, the sheer numbers on the ice. So, you know, you hate to see shots getting blocked at a point on a power play. Also because that's the great, easiest way to score a shorthanded goal as well. Yes. Tempting, though. Tempting. I will agree. The D-men want their cookies. They want those points. And the Toro has a really good shot, so yeah. he's confident in what he can bring to the net. Ta beaten into the attacking zone by Andrew. So we have an offside with 57 seconds left on the Hershey penalty. 11.03 left, second period. Here in the Class A Championship. Double A and Triple A tomorrow at Hatfield. I'll have the call of both of those games for you. Council Rock South against Penridge. Two teams that really bullied their way to the final. And then Malvern and LaSalle in the final in the Triple A. The Triple A comes first. And then the Double A is your nightcap. Dolkovich couldn't get that puck clear. Thomas Sevich. Hard in on the four check, but Hershey's penalty kill comes up with the clear. So head back into the Unionville defensive zone. Back to get it, Anthony Schlembach. Now to Andrews, turns it over, and the puck slides back to Thomas Savage, forced to get a face off in the D zone. All right, we're closing in on the halfway point of regulation here. Yeah. Hershey has the two-goal lead. Unionville starting to warm to the task here. Still plenty of running room left in this one for sure. Thomas Savage of aids one, and he's forced wide. It's in an onside play. Not the shot away, but it was blocked by Dolkovich and forced to clear. The Toro steps up. Nice dish. Thomas Savage in over the line, trying to stick handle, but we have a penalty call on the way. And it's a high stick, and it looks like, I think Hershey is the guilty party here again. Put Unionville back on the power play after just having a power play go by the wayside. Tyler Lucas being sent off for high sticking. Might be time to simplify here for Unionville, maybe get two guys in front of Placeris and just get the puck there and maybe go with the old philosophy. He, if he can't see it, maybe he can't stop it. Two minutes high sticking on Tyler Lucas, a valued weapon of the Hershey Trojans. Let's see if Unionville can take advantage and off the face off to Toro's bid is off a Hershey stick out of play. 
Just four seconds having elapsed off the power play time for Unionville, their second man advantage of the night in back-to-back -back bids. DeToro holding on to it. Colt, DeToro, one-timer, and Placeris is there. He didn't have anyone contending in front of him. That's exactly what we were talking about there, getting traffic and timing it right to get a screen. And they've got four guys on the perimeter. I'm not, I don't know if that's the best way to attack Hershey here, but they got a shot. Now let's uh, see if Placeris leaves them a rebound. Greenville does have 13 shots on net, including, I'd say, one or two real great A's to this point. The Toro will sauce. Colt will take. Moving into the corner for Cole Blackburn. Back to the line, Gaffney. And now DeToro for the Longhorns. Colt again. DeToro walks middle, shoots the puck, and that stopped right into the H. Anderson was lurking at the lip of the crease. Again, clear, clear sight line for Placeris. Yeah, we have it right in our sight line here. And so it's DeToro and another Unionville faceoff win. They've been really good in the draw here the last little bit. Into the high slot off a switch, Colt. On to the right side, Gaffney shoots up high. He was looking to get that top cheddar action, but not to be. DeToro with the line shoots again, and that's blocked. And taken the other way is that was blocked by Heisey. Brought back in transition, Kloss with a chance shorthanded shoots wide. Irwin tried to center, that's off target. Minute left in the Unionville power play. 9.03 to go second period. With Eric Wolf, Jordan Coons alongside here tonight as Unionville is well off, offside here. With a power play down to 50 seconds remaining. Yeah, Unionville's had some good zone time. Um, and, you know, now it's just all about the finish. Trip Young to dump it in. And Ta will be the first one there for Unionville. Gets crushed into the near side boards. But it's taken back by Unionville with a centering dish. That's off a Hershey stick. Trouble the other way. Dewan in shorthanded up the right wing. Shoots the puck and a save Tomasevich. That play all started off the block by Umberger. One more rush here for the Unionville power play as Schlembach turns it over. And Dewan is there first, though, takes the hit from Anderson to force the steal. Six seconds left on the power play, and Tomasevich gets away from a hip check, but that hip check is going to get called. Call it a trip. So that's three consecutive penalties at the tail end of penalty kills, and that is probably going to drive Jared Hill absolutely bonkers here to be on the penalty kill for this long back to back to back. Yeah, he just got around his hip there, and it looks like he slid his heel out and kind of gave him a little tap there, and he went down. But, yeah, there's this tempting fate a little bit here, giving Unionville some life. A little old-school hip check action, Eric, huh? I think that was the plan. <laughs> that was the plan. Don't see that very often these days. A lost start, I'd say, mostly because of the speed and skill, I'd say, more often than not. You don't have the big, bulky defenseman to shut it down and just eat pucks. you got to be that two-way puck-moving defenseman. can't tell you how many interviews I did with young defensemen that said, yeah, I'm a two-way defenseman likes to join the rush. Like, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> it's just a lost start. DeToro to bring it up the left wing. In for Unionville, will drive in behind, cut out the other side now. As the Longhorns set up on their third power play, Blackburn off the attack, shoots, and a save Placeris. Unionville picks up the rebound. Colt to the back to Toro, dusts it and shoots off the right pad of Placeris, the rebound for Blackburn, but his second effort blocked by Kloss. Unionville to take, a minute left on the power play, Blackburn shot blocked, and the puck cleared the rest of the way by Hershey's Tyler Treadway. Oh, they had, Hershey had way too many guys. 
Not enough stripes to see that one, Eric, as Hershey gets a stoppage. Maybe the smarter play would have been to give it to them and force the too many men call and get another penalty in a five on three. That was a liberal line change. Yes. Uh, you love it as a coach, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> from here it was pretty obvious. And now it's Unionville's second unit out to try and get something going here. 30 seconds left, power play shot for the point. Just wide, it, kind of an optical illusion from up here. At ice line, hooked on to Thomas Savage, top of the left circle, shot blocked by Lucas, another bid, and that's also blocked. Velosky got a piece of that. 15 seconds left on this third Unionville power play. Out of the corner, it's Thomas Savage on the feed from Ta. Thomas Savage wraps the goal on the backhand. Five left on the power play. Looks over his options, top of the right wing circle. Hands it down, low penalty is over. Back to the line, Young will Bump it from whence it came, and behind the goal, a centering pass, and that's knocked away. Usually one penalty kill is enough to really lift the momentum. Now you have three in a row. Got to be deflating for Unionville at this point right now to see that all get whisked away in six minutes of time gone with nothing to show for. Yeah, this is an important stage of the game right here. Um, you know, Hershey might come with a little push here since they've been killing so long. And uh, Unionville's top guys have been out a lot on the power play. So they might need a little breather here. So this is an interesting little section of the game. 5.40 to go, second period. 2-0. Hershey Trojans here in the Class A Championship. A face-off in the Hershey defensive zone. Unionville, another face-off win. Boy, if you want to talk about something that should be helping them tonight, it's that. DeWan looking to split the defense. Backhands one that's perilously close to the goal line, but Thomas Savage has the pad down. Unionville has dominated the faceoff circle tonight. I wish we had the numbers on that. And right here you're seeing Unionville's third group getting an extended shift um, while the, the, the power play groups are kind of recharging the batteries. That's pretty much in every other shift endeavor for those power play units for Unionville. As Hershey now has possession of the puck in the offensive zone, DeWan tied up by DeToro, ripped up the boards and sent out of play off the netting that I'm thankful is in front of us. My computer uh, wears a battle scar from my time in the USHL. I had just gotten it, and uh, maybe two months into having it, the, the broadcast location at Bob Suter's Capital Ice Arena in uh, Wisconsin is a nightmare because maybe this close and no netting. <laughs> Pass wing to wing and neutral ice gets deflected up and out of play. I'm looking down at my notes. Next thing you know, I've got a puck in my lap and my computer is hanging by a thread. So it wears a nice dent where uh, current Green Bay Gambler and Michigan State commit Mikey D'Angelo deflected a puck up and out of play and straight into my computer. Better your computer than your forehead. And I suppose so. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you've had to wear one or two. Here's Gaffney back in for Unionville. Pass back to the line. Colt, third year Longhorn, gets it to the net. Shot blocked to Toro, follows up and takes the stick out of the hands of Treadway, who got the block. So basically, five against five and, or four and a half. Treadway has a stick back, but Unionville threatening at the side of the net. Now in behind, Culp spins one to the goal mount, taken away by the Trojans, cleared to the line, not out to Toro, flings one, Placeris the save, and he's able to cover on the rebound, Culp lurking. But nothing else. 2-0 Hershey, 3.52 to go second period. And there's the traffic 
the traffic was there. I think, you know, he had to search to find it. It might have been a little rebound there. I, I think Unionville has to do more of that. Got shots through. A lot of shots were getting blocked there for a little bit, but getting it through and having traffic. Where it counts on the scoreboard 2 nothing on the shot count, you'd never know it. The 17 to 16 Hershey lead in that regard. Puck at center, Umberger over skates, but David Mace helps out two on one, pass across, okay. diving block. Young got a piece of that and thwarted that great A potential chance. Great play by Young. Mace though right back in, shoots the puck. Boy, did he get a lot on that snapshot. Deceptively so to miss the net. The one throws his weight around, but here comes Unionville. It's Anderson off the wing shooting. And Placeris forcing a faceoff. That is a deceptively strong snapshot off the wing right there. Didn't expect that gas. Yeah, these guys, the Hershey guys, they can all bring it. They can all bring it. That's what we noticed last year playing against them, how big and strong they were, and they could bring the rock. A steal and a centering pass. Tomasevich hits the post. He was right out in front, uncovered. Another shot missed the net. Andrews to spin it around the lip of the boards. Tomasevich to Ta. Check there out of the corner as Unionville keeping the pressure alive, and they come close again, but just missed. Weird, bouncing puck out in front. Placeris doesn't have his goal stick. Andrews takes, flings one save. Rebound opportunity at the side of the net. And no luck on the reception there for Taz. The puck is cleared by Hershey and it's gonna be an icing. So close on two bids right there for the Longhorn. And frustration mounting for Tomasevich who came the closest. I think you're starting to see those power plays maybe gave Unionville a little confidence. Yeah, they're spending a little more time in, in, in the offensive zone. They're getting more to the net. Um, they've had the better chances so far in this period, I think. I would agree. So how does Hershey settle it down here? I think you kind of go a little bread and butter, maybe put some pucks below their D and make their D be a difference here and, and start a breakout and get your four check going. Get your four check going on them and see if you create some turnovers and you know just just to change the momentum a little bit. Yeah, they haven't had their way as much as they did in that first period as Colt moves to the attack and Placeris has it all zipped up here on the near side. Because early on the dancing shoes were on for their skill players and lately it's been much tougher sledding. So the adjustments there, they just have not beaten 91 in white. And the other part is, you know, Hershey was killing penalties for a while there, and that, that's exhausting. You know, that takes a lot out of you. So they, they could be paying the price for that a little bit right now, too. A face-off to the right of Alex Placeris. Anderson to dig in opposite Kloss, and Kloss will push this ahead for Hershey and start a rush, and it's Treadway motoring up the left wing. Able to drag into the left wing corner. Still holding onto the puck, gets around another and shoots off the side of the net. Unionville to take it to the rebound, but turn it over right up the middle of the ice. Treadway couldn't get a stick on that. Blackburn transitioning for Unionville, cuts middle and fires one wide of the target. Blackburn settles in, but can't make a play on it as Hershey will clear. 96 seconds remaining here in period two with a 2-0 Hershey lead. Goals from Cock or Lucas and Umberger. Puck in front again, a great backhand opportunity. Placera shuts it down. Bit too easy getting to the house right now for Unionville. Here's Lucas to take, immediately stuffed right at center by Ta, waiting opposite Treadway. Again, blocked from entry by Kyle Kloss up to the attack. Ta defends him. Final minute here of the second period of the championship game. A 2-0 Hershey Lee. Quickly coming Mesh. Pass across ice, intercepted. 
by Ben Curry and moved ahead. Numbers here for Unionville. Thomas Savage, left wing, settles in and shoots through a screen at missed the net. Kept in once again by Curry with a pass was off the mark. Under 30 seconds to play here in the second period. Still have a third period to play here in this one. And certainly it'll be all kinds of house calls for Unionville here with desperation and nothing left else left to go for. Andrews with 10 seconds left. Thomas Savage plays catch. Andrews behind the net. Puck bounced on him. Ta helps out three seconds and two. At the side of the goal, Velosky helping out defensively, forcing the end of the second period. And Hershey will go to the room up by a pair. Yeah, I think that, that period goes to Unionville, but unfortunately they didn't catch on the scoreboard to show that. Um, so hey, they've got their work cut out for them in the third, and, but I think they have something to build on now for sure. Someone's going to be hoisting the Flyers' cup by the end of this one. Who will it be? It's a 2-0 Hershey lead after 34 minutes here at Iceline. We'll be back with the third period after this extended break. For your surprisingly great rates, Contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Eldion Pagulary in Feasterville, Travos today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Blue Stein, Michael & Company certified public accountants believe that your bottom line is as important to them as it is to you. Why? because they care about the things that you care about. Whereas most accountants can take your numbers and put them on financial statements and tax returns, Blue Stein and Michael work with you through the year to help you solve problems by providing sound professional advice. They enable you to make key business decisions and they are with you throughout the entire year, not just tax time. Blue Stein and Michael are not just hired hands. They are part of your team, and they provide professional service when you need it most. Blue Stein and Michael specialize in accounting, tax, and consulting services for small businesses, primarily for the construction industry. If you're looking for yes men, hire someone else. But if you want sound advice from service-oriented CPAs, then you'll want to call Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. That's Blue Stein and Michael at 215-635-3200. Hey Flyers fans, baseball's right around the corner. Your Trenton Thunder begin their jam-packed season with an opening night celebration on Tuesday, June 4th. Come out for our Margaritaville weekend from June 7th through the 9th. Be a part of our heart-healthy night on June 25th and celebrate the 4th of July at the Thunder. Daily specials return with dollar hot dogs and kids eat free Tuesdays, Thirsty Thursdays, Cases Pork Roll Fridays, and fireworks most Thursdays and Saturdays. There's something going on at every Thunder game in 2024. Get your tickets at TrentonThunder.com. When you are facing a home or business catastrophe, whether small or large, you need a professional damage restoration company that you can count on for top-notch work. One that relieves you from the worries and stress of physical recovery and assures the best outcome. Since 2004, Accord Restoration has helped people go from disaster to done. Accord Restoration is on the web at AccordRestoration.com or call toll-free at 1-888-277-0651.
Haddon Planning Group is an independent financial advisory firm serving all Flyers fans across the country. Located in Pennsylvania since 1981, we will offer a free financial plan to all parents of student-athletes participating in the Flyers Cup. For more information about our services, go to HaddonPlanning.com or call Jake Reardon at 856-428-5300. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Do you know what a blue hen is? It's prideful, spirited, fiery. A blue hen never backs down from a challenge. And we're there to support them. Delaware Orthopedic Specialist, the official orthopedic partner of University of Delaware Athletics.
broadcast is presented by the Flyers Cup and SFBN, who own all broadcast rights. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game, including social media, is strictly prohibited. Coverage of the 2024 Flyers Cup Championship game is sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. Of course, you can get all of your goodies at Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. Head to the Flyers Cup website and head to the shop page, and you are on track. Someone tonight, fan, parents, family, I get the feeling there's going to be a lot of sales tonight and tomorrow. Ahead of the state championships on Saturday. And you were uh, regaling me with uh, some of the results out west. So... You know, really going to be an interesting state final this year. You had mentioned that A is anyone's game. Double A could go one way or the other, and triple A may not. Yeah, I think just we, we see the results out there, and uh, it, Pine Richland is already through to the triple A final. Um, historically good program. Um, they bounce them around out there a little bit differently. They've won at double A, and now you know, they're up at triple A right now. Um, but like I said, a historically strong program. Um, Thomas Jefferson has taken the double A Penn's Cup. Um, and the folks at Penn Ridge are very familiar with Thomas Jefferson. Um, that's who they played a couple years ago in the state final. Um, so I'm sure those guys are kind of hoping for a rematch there. Uh, I'm sure Council Rock South has wants to weigh, on it, weigh in on that. Um, and rightfully so, because they're a very good team. Um, and then at the single A, it's going on right now. It doesn't look like there's a score out there between um, Shaler and Greensburg. I'm sorry, is it Shaler? Yes, Shaler and Greensburg, Salem. No, sorry, Chartiers Valley and Greensburg, Salem. Um, Greensburg, Salem, Salem was a uh, got knocked out in the semifinals last year. Um, and I, I had seen those semis, and I thought they were the best team I had seen out there. But Kiske upended that and uh, took the Penns Cup last year. but So uh, Greensburg-Salem probably has a little bit of a trip on their shoulder and wants to, wants to come out here to the stadium this year and uh, let us know that uh, last year was kind of a fluke. That's why you play the games, right? Yep, you absolutely. never know. You never know. Well, in this one, we still don't know. Hershey does have the 2-0 lead after two periods of play. That's Eric Wolf. I'm Jordan Coons alongside. Before we get to that, first let's head to our player shout-out. It's Kyle Kloss. Uh, of the Hershey Trojans. Kyle is having an outstanding senior year and congratulating him on his entire Hershey High School career. You've worked hard for and have earned everything you've achieved. Continue to go for it, Kyle. Well, it's 2 nothing Hershey, and there is 17 minutes remaining at the very least. What does Unionville have to do to make sure that it is the very least? I think they found a little bit of a recipe there in the second period on what's going to be successful. Um, getting pucks to the net, getting a little more traffic, um, and sustaining possession in the Hershey end. Uh, and, you know, hey, obviously getting six minutes worth of power play helped them do that. Uh, I think, you know, the, the big thing I'll be interested to see is what kind of response we get from Hershey. Uh, I think we both kind of thought maybe it slowed down, their pace slowed down a little bit. In, in that second period, so let's see if they find, you know, after the ice cut, after a little rest here, see if they find that first first period pace they had. What I'm worried about, Eric, is almost that in, in terms of game management, that Unionville had their shot, and I don't know how many more they'll get. That's what I'd be worried about in terms of, like, it's got to be something obvious mm -hmm. at this point if, Hershey's going to be penalized in terms of the, the balance of the, the pace of play. That's maybe, I don't know if it's conspiracy me talking or I've never been a coach before, but it might be if it was a, a Coach Jordan thing talking here. But that's one thing I would be in the back of my mind worried about a little bit. Yeah, I mean, typically in, in playoff hockey, you think you think that maybe the, the referees put away the whistles um, in the third period. Um, not always the case. Uh, 
I think is evidence that when we played Unionville, there was uh, a couple late calls that, uh, right or wrong, they were made and they led to opportunities. You just don't know, you know, if it's if it's bad enough, they're going to call it. I, I don't think they'll have a choice. We'll step aside quickly, come right back with the puck drop of period three. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series is Greater Philadelphia's premier youth hockey tournament experience, featuring events throughout the year for all ages and levels. Visit www.midatlantichockey.com to register now for the upcoming spring, summer, and fall showcases. The Mid-Atlantic Showcase Series coming up. Well, back here at the ranch, this is the Class A Championship game of the 2024 Flyers Cup, sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. Seeing the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Ty, making his way up here. I'll cover the microphone. Uh-oh. What's the, what's the good news he brings? <laughs> Just, that is the ultimate compliment. <laughs> Apparently, I was I was doing a better job than Tony Romo. Oh. <laughs> and that guy was in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Never as a player, though. All right, Hershey two, Unionville nothing. Hershey will head right to left. Unionville left to right. Here in this winner go home scenario. Someone is going to hoist the Flyers' Cup tonight. Who will it be? Will it be the Hershey Trojans or the Unionville Longhorns? And here comes Culp off the bat for Unionville. We'll skate into the right wing corner. Velosky defending for Hershey. The duck around the defender. The pass that was disrupted at the line to Toro keeps away from David Mache. Mache helps out for Hershey, starts a three on two. Umberger to the wing. Here's Dewan. Drops off Mesh at the right circle. Hash to the net front. Heading wide of the goal. Umberger over skates. Loose puck to the near side wall. Culp the bump set. Anderson and out to center. Coming is Blackburn. Shooting the puck. It's blocked. And settled aside by Placeris. Dewan helping out defensively for Hershey. Umberger now in control of things. Blake Umberger will just fire it from, I don't know, 150 feet. And a save made by Thomas Savage. Treadway gets to the rebound for Hershey. That was the old Chris Pronger move. Yes, it was. Thomas Savage to bring it. Rittner defending. Thomas Savage into the corner. Forced there by the Hershey defense. Leaned on, but he's able to get the puck free to Ta. Back to the line it comes. And a wrist shot by Young was blocked. Dang can't keep it in for Unionville. Tyler Lucas hobbled as he heads back to the bench in pain. I don't know what happened there. Or if he just lost an edge, I'm not sure. Carson Hummer on the chip and chase for Hershey. Opposite Dang. Hummer back in behind the Unionville net. Drive it corner to corner. Dang arrives and gets shoved into the boards by Hummer. Rittner coming up, follows up, and keeps the play alive at the point. Out for Bryce Irwin into the high slot. Wrist shot against the grain, goes wide of the target. Now it's Cox in control. Trying to lift it in below the goal line. Puck turned over, though. Cox has it back and shoots. Diving block made by Dang. Greenville trapped in the defensive zone, but they are able to get a line change here off the clear. 14.45 left, third period. 2-0 Hershey. Tyler Lucas is second, Blake Umberger's third of the Flyers Cup Tournament. Those are your goal scorers here tonight. Dalkovich on the turn and take. Measured by Culp, who picks his pocket. He's off to the races. Culp shoots! Save made off the cuff of the glove of the goaltender Placeris. Seems like he's the straw that stirs the drink here for Unionville right now or just in general. I think if they could get Culp the puck in flight. Here's a chance, and Hershey scores. It's DeWan on the pass from Mesh. Three, nothing, Hershey. 
to one second goal of the Flyers Cup. Puts the Trojans one step closer. It was a nice little peek to put, just put the puck up into open ice and they just skated onto it, turned it into a little two on one. Simple play, but very effective. Aside from the one clean shot, two of the goals here tonight, east-west is east-west as it gets. So Unionville coming close at one end, and then at the other end, a goal from Ryan Dewan. David Mesh's first assist of the Flyers' Cup, making it 3-0. Hershey, penalty call coming in this one is a slash, and with Treadway's lumber on the ice, it's a slash against Unionville. Power play, Hershey, and a chance to really salt this one away. And it's one of their better defensemen in Trip Young who's heading to the box. To say this is an enormous kill would be an understatement. <laughs> would agree. Kloss to duel with Culp. Faceoff was won by Kloss, but we'll do it again after an encroachment in the dot. Power play Hershey, second one of the night. They scored on their first one, courtesy Blake Umberger. Draw win for the Trojans. Rittner at the line will straddle it. Pick up Kloss off his stick. A little give and go. Treadway off the wall with it. Treadway into the high slot will pass it off. Holding on to it, Tyler Lucas. And now Rittner into the corner. Kloss centers the side of the net. Guarded by Tomasevich and brought back in transition by Andrews. And a skipper heads in on goal. Placeris forced to guide that one away from trouble. Good idea from Andrews there. Maybe a bad hop. Take take your chances. Why not? Bit of an undisciplined call or penalty taken here by Hershey. An interference penalty. Treadway really lifting the stick of Thomas Savage for no real reason. And that eliminates Hershey's power play. And in a minute and 24 seconds puts Unionville right back on the man advantage. Abbreviated, yes, but at least an opportunity. Hershey controls the defensive zone draw. They're in the white, heading right to left. Unionville in the blue. They're heading left to right here in the third. Kloss off and running. Up the left wing now into a four on four. Ooh, headhunter missed the net. Puck kept alive by the Trojans, but can't really get much traction in the offensive zone. Kloss going to work in on the four check, forcing a steal for Hershey at four on four. Put the pass across ice. Chance for Rittner, but it's blocked. The Toro stepped in the way of that and is forced to ice it. Yeah, that looked like it stung a little. So strategically speaking, it's okay to ice it here at this level because you can get the line change. Whereas that would not be the best course of action. Yeah, I think that's one of the, yeah. I'd like to see that change brought to, to high school and midget hockey. Um, Cause that does add a, you know, it adds a layer of strategy. I think it would be good for the game. I think Placeris took that one off the melon on the shot from Blackburn. And Blackburn almost forcing a steal. But out comes Owen Hulez. Off to the attack, cuts middle, holds, shoots. Thomas Semich the save. 11 seconds before Unionville will head to the power play. I think Hulez would like that one over again. I don't think he got all of that.
given room to operate, certainly, in the offensive zone as well. So four on four for another 11 seconds with 11.41 left in the third period. Unionville student section waiting to explode here. But they trail 3-0 here in the championship. And a steal. Gloss has it, a backhander. And Tomasevich fights that one off. Pocket behind the Unionville goal, and out come the Longhorns. 11.23 left, regulation, 29 seconds, power play. Andrews will go cross corner and then up into Toro. Arrives first and shoots one, looking for the deflection. Andrews forces it wide, put to the slot. Todd couldn't get a stick on that, and the puck is cleared. Ten ticks remaining on this power play for Unionville. Their fourth of the, after the evening as Andrews will move his way in. Longhorns trying to get that across ice. Umberger on the steal, but couldn't clear past Tomasevich. Wrist shot blocked by Mache. David Mache couldn't exit the zone. Dang keeps the zone for the Longhorns to Tomasevich. And he rolls Rittner down to the ice. Puck battle, back in behind the Hershey goal with Tomasevich. The one doing all the work is flattened behind the net by Rittner. And forced to move it, they do. At the line, Young shooting one, deflected and cleared by Hershey. Race on for the puck and trip, Young is first there. 10 minutes, 10 seconds remain third period and a three nothing. Hershey Trojans lead, Tomasevich will move it and force a skipping puck into the attacking zone. Heisey defending for Hershey. Off the turnover, Andrews shoves Heisey down to the ice. We play on as it's centered in front. Loose puck, score! <laughs> Thomas Savage gets Unionville on the scoreboard. His third of the tournament after a heavy hit thrown and a turnover, the Longhorns Convert. Yeah, kind of a, a scramble there. And Thomas Shevitz found it and did what he needed to do there. Just bowled him over. And I think Hershey was looking for the penalty call, and Thomas Savage goes tweeners to give the Longhorns some life here with 9.48 to play in regulation of this championship. Yeah, we'll see if that 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 stays that way because yeah, we've we've seen that that play called before, but again, third period, one of the biggest games of the year. We'll see. Hershey trying to respond with Hules, and that shot took off. Lucas to the rebound, out of the corner, will keep the cycle driven. Erwin Mark puck to center. Culp will move it. Got to give. A large sigh of relief for the Longhorns right now. You're finally on the board. It took you this long, but you're on it. Culp forcing a steal. Saucer pass that's blocked away by Irwin. Anderson to the carom, throws it to the net front. Placeris the save with the right pad. Centered again with help from Hules. Couldn't clear the zone, though. Second effort, and it'll be brought by Bryce Irwin. And he'll head cross corner on the dump in and head off on a line change. It's kind of been building here. And finally, they're able to come away with it as a stick goes flying. That's David Mesh's twig that's out of the corner. An icing called against Unionville. And that stick is uh, broken. Yeah, I think we'll see how that, that impacts Unionville. They finally got rewarded for some hard work. They worked hard a lot in the second period, didn't get the reward, and now they got it. Maybe that kind of emboldens them a little bit. Hershey looking for their first Flyers Cup championship. A chance to represent the East in the state championship on Saturday at the Skadium. At the line, Matt Dolkovich will drive one that's blocked. Little set play for there, there for Umberger. Just a tough pass to handle. Burke is hit hard out at center. And a roughing call assessed against the Trojans. And head coach Jared Hill is 
not particularly pleased. Blake Umberger will take the seat, and that's a valuable penalty killer in the box for the Trojans. The officiating staff is conferring, though. Was it an off? I, I didn't catch the end of it. Was it offsides? Did they call it offsides after the delay? Is that what the, you think this conversation's about? Here? Or was it a high stick? That, that would be the only reason okay. they're sending it all the way down. Oh, they're not. Okay. I can see why it was that hit off the uh, scorekeeper's glass. By though. Know. Okay. The only place where there's glass over there to make a play. Go figure. Oh, well, huge opportunity for Unionville. It sure is. With 8:24 left in the third period, that's Eric Wolf. I'm Jordan Coons. Thanks for coming aboard. Here on the 2024 Flyers Cup Single A Championship. There's a chance. Blackburn missed on the tip. Gaffney at the point throws one. Placeris fights it off. Blackburn to the rebound. Turnaround shot. And that got the glass. Kept alive by Gaffney. And driven in below the goal line. Velosky for Hershey. Trying to clear. Dewan will send it. I'm going to put this at... High alert, better score on this one to give yourself a real chance and sow the seeds of doubt. Rittner is own zone, clears for Hershey out to the safety of center. The AAA final will be the first one tomorrow at Hatfield, followed by the AA and the nightcap. Malvern and LaSalle in the AAA championship game. Council Rock South Penridge in the double A final. We'll have the call of both of those for you right here. A steal by Tyler Lucas on the penalty kill. 37 seconds left on this Unionville power play. And Tripp Young will chip in and chase. Rittner arrives first for Hershey up the boards. Ta cannot keep that puck in the attacking zone. Quick retrieval by the Longhorns. It's Young again shooting, and Placeris no chances taken there. He wants a face off, he'll get it. 19 seconds left on the power play, 6.49 left regulation. I think Unionville needs to be a little, has show a little bit more urgency when they put pucks in deep on the power play um, to go retrieve. Uh, they, they need to get possession immediately. That's a big face off. It's a 50-50 face off to Thomas Savage. He golfed it wide. Andrews and if he stick play to keep that play alive, Young to Thomas Savage in the slot. He couldn't get that shot away, and Hershey will clear. That will do it for the power play. Really great look. Three-one Hershey, six twenty-five left in this championship game. Sent across to Michael Tom, battling a bouncing biscuit. He's in, fell but not deterred. Heads into the corner for Unionville. Throws one off the skate. Loose puck batted at. Ooh. Placeris the save on Andrews. Todd of the rebound. Out to Young. Shooting through a screen and Placeris covers. Whistle stoppage. Face off in the Trojans defensive zone with six minutes left. Crunch time for both of these teams. A face off and a key one to the left of Alex Placeris. Who has only given up two goals all tournament. A steal by Kloss off to the races. Slashed by Culp. Penalty call up coming against Unionville. And their top weapon is heading to the penalty box with 5.49 left in regulation. Makes the climb that much harder. Yeah, he left the, the ref no wiggle room there. I mean, that, that's a tough one to take there. 
The look on your face said it all as soon as it happened. So not only does Hershey get to potentially work with this man advantage here, but also kill clock. I think that's the bigger thing right now for Unionville. The clock is definitely their enemy. And not a lot of urgency to get that puck north as Umberger will take his time and move in off a set play into the attacking zone. Mesh to the net front, score! Power play goal, Brady Cox. 4-1, Hershey. Yeah, they just found a little opening in the middle of Unionville's PK, and uh, I think Thomas Shevitz thought he was probably going upstairs, and he just kind of slid it along the ice. Two-point night for Brady Cox and Hershey's bench and their fans are feeling it on the cusp of their first Flyers Cup championship. What's the message here on both sides as timeout is called? Well, I think for Unionville now, it's you've got to have two men on the puck. You've got to be getting pucks in there and you know, working your backside off to get possession, and then everything at the net. I mean, get it to the net, crash hard, um, and you, you've just got to be able to play in their end, you know, the rest of this game. You've got to keep pucks down in their end of the ice. Um, Hershey's in a different boat. Um, anything that looks dangerous, ice it, flip it high out, get it out of your end. Uh, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just can't be in your net. Five seventeen left in regulation time. That's really the only lever you can pull right now is a timeout and force really everyone to calm at this point. Yeah, I would say somewhere around that four minute mark. I mean, you need three. Lock um, hasn't started. Has anyone noticed that the clock hasn't started? It has been 5.17 left in the third period for a little while here. I mean, we have the time. It's unofficial. Now, here we go. Just got some free hockey, that's all. About a free 30 seconds. As Thomas Evich makes the save. Yeah, I think they picked up on it. They're going to make the change. <laughs> Chance of fix the clock have uh, erupted here at Ice Line in Westchester. You know, the other part about for Hershey is your best defense can be possessing the puck in the other team's end. If there's no there's no need for a blind backhand. There's no need to throw something into the slot if you don't know you're going to have it because if you possess it down there, you're just frustrating them and burning clock. I'm sure the message from Jared Hill and crew was for a lack of better words, don't do anything stupid. Nothing low percentage, nothing that can create a high in the zone turnover. Tried a bit of a Hail Mary there that fails. Hershey will take possession of the puck. Dalkovich at the line shooting, it's tipped. But Thomas Evich has it with Kyle Kloss providing the ramp. Yeah, that save was trickier, trickier than it looked. That, that, that was a nice little tip in front. Four and a half to play, regulation time in the Class A championship. 
And Hershey keeps the zone. Claw steps up and gets hit. Unionville will take control as time's ticking. And they're offside of the offensive blue as Blackburn beat everyone in by a half step. And sometimes it's just that half step that's enough. Yeah, it was a good call. He was right on the line. It was, it was close, but it was the right call. Four minutes, 20 seconds remain here in the Class A Championship of the 2024 Flyers Cup. Sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel, powered by SFBN. With Eric Wolf, Jordan Coons alongside. Thank you for joining us here tonight. There will be a champion here. As Hershey looking to put the finishing touches on this one. Thomas Savage forced to make a key save there, a face off of the Unionville defensive zone. All right, you're on the bench. You're close, you can taste it. How do you get the guys to settle in and focus? You just said it. It's, we still have four minutes left. Um, You've got to just play it out and be smart about your decisions. Culp in front, save made, and the rebound is spiked out at the point. Gaffney shot blocked by Mays. That was trouble. Gaffney keeps the zone for Unionville to Blackburn, and a shot missed the net. Harem to the near side. Gaffney keeps the zone for the Longhorns, but he can't on a second effort. And Hershey content to ice. And they take the Bears Cup very seriously out there, so they've, they're experienced. They've won a lot of those. They know what that's about. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's pretty easy for these guys to, yeah, are they excited about this one? I'm sure they are, but they've been in this position before with, a, with something big on the line. And they came close a year ago, but... Had to wait their turn, so to speak. Young keeps at the line for Unionville. A shot, stick eight, Placeris into the corner, ripped down the ice, and it's another icing. Yeah, and that's the freedom you have as Hershey right now. That's the best play right there. Taking icing way better than picking it out of your own net. It kills any kind of flow to Offensive zone time. Uh, start from a stopping position here. Thomas Savage wins the draw. Andrews a shot that missed. At the other end, it's Zach Thomas Savage staying put in the Unionville net. Puck tied up in the corner. Hershey fans won a penalty, and so do the Unionville fans. Everyone's arms up, and the ones who matter don't. Ta with his head up, picks up Andrews at center. A backhand flip into the middle. Velosky takes it away with 2.50 to go. Dang in his own zone as the Longhorns get set up. Andrews down the right wing will flip the puck deep into the Hershey end of the ice. Velosky to take. Thomas Savage again staying put. Hershey to the puck. Here's Umberger with a pass ahead. And Umberger flattens Andrews as Dewan makes his way in. A stick save Thomas Savage. Off glass to the line, pass Donkovich and down into the Hershey zone. Penalty call up coming, and this one is against Unionville. Placeris to the bench for the extra attacker as it's floated wide of the goal, and Gaffney touches up, and that pretty much puts this one away as Andrews heads to the penalty box for Unionville. Yeah, that's just a frustration, frustration penalty. But you get, yeah, I mean, you got to give Unionville credit, though. Um, like we said at the beginning, there's not a lot of people expected them to be here. I felt, you know, them knocking us out wasn't quite the upset that it was kind of cracked up to be. They were a good team. They played us the one-goal games this year. I thought calling that upset was a little bit of a disservice to Unionville. They, they earned that victory. They were the better team, and um, they made an impressive run here. Uh, they are... You know, they are definitely, you know, they belonged here. And, you know, and then you tip your cap to Hershey for doing what they're doing today. It was.
was certainly quite a run for Unionville to be at this point. I'm not privy to the, the history of, is this the lowest seed that's ever made it to the championship game? At, at the A level, it may be. Um, I'm, I'm not positive of that history myself. Um, yeah, it, it's been typically at the A level been, been dominated by the top four or five. I've always been in, you know, the final. A steal, Treadway in front, unable to get that puck to set. DeWan back to it, he'll throw cross corner where it's intercepted oh, and floated one. back out. Potential two on one, Pulp across, Blackburn on the backhand and he missed the net. There goes Tomasevich to the bench for the extra attacker. And there was penalties on both sides, so manpower did not change. So it is a six on five here for Unionville. One minute to go, they need three to tie or else it's Hershey's first Flyers Cup championship. Placeris had his eyes on the prize there. Almost turned it over, Hershey ices it. That would have been a moment to be sure. A face-off in the Hershey defensive zone and timeout. Called here. This is probably the timeout just to remind your players that you have another game. Don't get into anything that, you know, you can't get yourself out of. <laughs> yes. Let cooler heads prevail. This is Hershey's fifth trip to the Flyers Cup championship game. They came up empty the previous four, including last year. Two of us that have headsets on were there. I'd much rather be on that side of the ice than this one, no yeah. offense. <laughs> I, I can understand that completely. I think it speaks to the you never know nature of a single elimination tournament. Well, that's what makes this so special. You look at the, the, the crowd here. Um, this is the sales pitch for high school hockey right here. Pretty easy one. Gaffney at the point, save Placeris. The net empty at the other end, sent by Dalkovich all the way down and off the post. And icing will be called as a result. Dalkovich mere centimeters away from the finishing touch. DeToro, a clap bomb, that's blocked by Kloss. Sent by Treadway, out to center. 25 seconds left in regulation. Thomas Savage dumps the puck into the attacking zone. Dalkovich retreats for Hershey on the backhand. Forced out of there with 15 seconds, cleared all the way down and just wide of the target, icing again. Against Unionville. And now officially you can feel it. And I'm sure this stirs up uh, a lot of emotions um, for the Hershey staff as they were probably felt like they were in a position uh, to do this a few years back. And unfortunately the, uh, the pandemic shut us down uh, where they were gonna go against Palmyra 
in the Flyers Cup final. So uh, I'm sure that that's on their mind too and guys that were on that team at the time that didn't get the opportunity. 10 seconds left, puck down the ice towards the empty net and in with under six seconds to play. An empty net tally for the Trojans. Puts the exclamation point on this one. Tucker Velosky from distance. Hershey High School, this is your time to shine. The first time at the top of the mountain. The Trojans are Flyers Cup champions in 2024. Dominant defensively. Dominant in goal. And they let everything else do the talking en route to their first ever Flyers Cup championship victory. I think it's well deserved. I think they proved to be the best team in the tournament and they rightfully won it. And kudos certainly to Unionville on an incredible run. Absolutely. And you had mentioned that the Chessmont or Conference had really dominated this tournament for so long. But it's the CPIHL that comes away with one in 2024. Just a, a wonderful effort from Unionville, a, a Cinderella story to get here. Made it a 3-1 game at one point, but Hershey just pulled away and got the saves that they needed and took care of business. It's the first time for Hershey at the top of the mountain. checking my exact next question. What's going on west of here? So, right now it is one nothing Greensburg Salem over Chartiers Valley. So if that were to score were to hold, it would be Hershey and Greensburg Salem at the Skadium at 11 a.m. on Saturday. But obviously looks like there's more work to be done out there. Brad Marsh and Bob the Hound Kelly on the presentation of the 2024 Flyers Cup. I'd say I saw them last year and they haven't aged a day <laughs> in the 365 days since the last Flyers Cup. tournament team being unveiled right now. Ryan Dewan had a great tournament. Cole Blackburn was outstanding. Kyle Kloss had a huge goal. 
in Hershey's second game of the tournament. The senior captain at Hershey High. Matt Donkovich, a towering presence at the blue line for Hershey. All tournament team defense. And Corrado de Toro rounds things out in that respect, I imagine. The last one will be the goaltender for Hershey, Alex Placeris. Shock of the century right there. Two goals given up in the tournament. Pretty easy decision. Yeah. <laughs> Placeris picks up the Flyers Cup single A MVP, and I think that decision better have been unanimous as well. He was just outstanding from start to finish for this Trojans group. And now the presentation of the trophy they wanted to hoist all night. So now each player being recognized. Well, Eric, I imagine this is getting the fire burning for next year, huh? I would agree with that statement. What's interesting about this is for the first time, <laughs> you won't get to play the f defending Flyers Cup champ in your regular season because <laughs> we don't see them, uh, nobody sees them in the regular season. So uh, kind of interesting hmm. dynamic there. Well, the Hershey faithful have stuck around and they're waiting for the trophy to be handed off, likely to their senior captain, Kyle Kloss. For some reason, I get the feeling the first handoff may be to Jared Hill. Well, that would be fitting. And now the moment you've been waiting for all night. The presentation of the 2024 Flyers Cup. We'll let the moment speak for itself.
I'm sure at this moment, light as a feather. Before we go, Jordan, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Well, of course. Thanks great. for climbing aboard. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Everyone on Hershey High School and their fans and friends and family members will have their Kodak moment right here. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Single A Flyers Cup Championship Game sponsored by Top Shelf Sports and Apparel. If you want to get your Flyers Cup memorabilia, which documents this Hershey victory here tonight, Head to the Flyers Cup official website for your Flyers Cup swag. Imagine you'll want to remember this one, the first time in Hershey High School history. Champions in 2024. For Eric Wolf, Jordan Coons, and the rest of the SFBN crew, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We'll have the AA and the AAA championships tomorrow from Hatfield Ice. We'll talk to you then. Until then, have a great night.